Hey everybody, uh, welcome again to Monroe Live. And uh, today we're gonna start off basically looking at the, uh, the front end of the vehicle. Uh, I wanna have a look at the, uh, the, the frunk and compare it to the existing one that we have here from Tesla. Um, I wanna look at how the cooling system works. And I think it'll be kind of an interesting program. The guys are telling me that there's lots of stuff for me to look at. So with that, let me just go over here and uh, we're gonna remove the frunk. So um, let's, let's pull this thing out. <laughs> Corey, get the active valve. Oh, 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 oh thank God. Oh, Corey, oh, I think you just saved my life. Holy oh, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, 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 what just happened? Okay, so we dramatized that a little bit, but uh, it was uh, something that almost happened when I first saw the uh, underneath the uh, the frunk. I, I, I was very shocked at how many hoses and how many other doodads are floating around inside this thing. So let's go over here and just have a quick look. <clears throat> the first thing that that I want to do is tell you what the different components are inside the product. So over here we have the inverter. The inverter is basically what runs the motor uh, among other things. Down here we've got the motor and the gearbox. Over here, we've got the compressor, which I believe um, is, a, is as good as what we saw off the Tesla. I think it might be even a little smaller. This is the DC-DC converter. This changes DC power from one voltage to another. <clears throat> Down here, we've got the onboard charger. That's, uh, that's to make sure that everything is kind of like working from, uh, from your, from your uh, you know, for the rest of the car. Um, and then we have four pumps. Pump one, pump two, pump three, and pump four. Now, pump three and four have a heat sink um, underneath them. And, uh, and quite frankly, um, I, don't, I don't see that very often. The last thing I want you to see is down here, you can see that there's a four-way valve. Okay. Now, connecting all this stuff together is this myriad of hoses. And you can see that we've marked the flow characteristics for all of these different hoses so that we can try and figure out how this actually works. So now that we're looking at the hoses, let's, let's, <laughs> let's look at how they have to be put together. One of the banes of, um, uh, of, of an engineer is COTS, commercial off-the-self components. And when I look at this, I look at a crutch. I, I don't like these things. I don't like them because it's a good way to have an operator make a mistake. So if we look at these components, and I'll point them out, right here, this is a spring clip <clears throat> or, or a spring clamp. There are uh, 31 of those. Um, there are 14 uh, different um, COTS connectors. And um, if we look at them, this is gonna be a T. These, um, the straight ones are called uh, nipples, like down here. The, uh, and then we've got um, uh, 390s, and I can't see one right now, but there's 390s in there as well. These are a lot of different connectors that, um, when I was in charge, of, or not in charge, but when I worked on the sealing and fastening task force at Ford Motor Company back in the, uh, in the 80s, we tried everything we could to eliminate leaks. And what we found was that these type of connectors, um, they just leak, They're, it just happens that way. So we tried to get rid of them. The other thing we tried to get rid of was, if you'll notice here, box on top of box, on top of box, on top of box, on top of box, and then, a, and then we've got a cross car beam, and then another box. It just, and then look at all these screws. We, have, we can't count them all up, we'll do that later on. But the, the deal here is that there's a, there's a myriad of things that we just were shocked at. The one, thing that, uh, the one thing that I was shocked at was this. It says on the back, scrap if dropped. And we have no idea what that product is. So <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we need to look at in order to really understand why it is that Ford did the things that they did. So 
one of the little doodads that we saw that uh, that kind of um, kind of surprised me was this. These are sealed connectors, um, and they're high power connectors, but. For some reason or other, there's a box over the top of them. And I, I really don't know why. It's not like somebody I don't think is gonna be able to get in. They'd have to get through the covers that are over the top of this in order to get to that. This just seems like a, a waste of money. Now, uh, we used to do a lot of work with Ford at one time, a long time ago. And one of the things that we did was we talked Ford into going to a plastic uh, battery case. So, as I mentioned, um, Monroe and Associates does a lot of work um, for companies to try and help them reduce cost, improve their designs and whatnot. People say, well, why do you do that? And well, are our guys smart enough and whatnot? But things happen. So this right here was the old Ford corporate standard. And this is what we proposed to Ford. Now, this was quite a while ago, and you can see that this one's all plastic. This one is steel on the bottom. A bunch of bolts, a bunch of fasteners, and then a plastic top. To go from this to this saved Ford Motor Company two and a half million dollars in the first six months of implementation, and that was using the old uh, plastic injection molding, old plastic injection mold, and turning it into this. I and that incorporated the investment change. I'm happy to see that Ford is basically at least um, kept that because this is an all plastic battery tray and um, and that's kind of a that's kind of a good thing let's just have a look at what we've got laying on the floor here these are the components and we're missing oh here let me just put this on here too <coughs> oops so these are the componentry that are inside the, uh, the frunk. So we're looking at a lot of bits and pieces and, um, and uh, the first question is, well, how does that compare with Tesla? Well, this is Tesla's. They have a cowl piece that goes over in the front and the rest of it, it just seals off into, into the, uh, basically the body. So this is kind of more, a little more elegant design because it's got a lot less parts. Now, one thing that we were totally stumped on was these drilled holes. Um, these look like they were done at assembly. You can see that they've got little tags and whatnot. If I was going to, oh, there's another one here. So if I was going to, uh, if I was going to design this mold, I would just have a pin in here. <clears throat> that pin would make that hole and I'd be done. But these were all drilled in and so we didn't really understand what was going on. And then we found out an interesting thing from one of the, um, <clears throat> one of the people who were watching, apparently, initially, this button for the hood release for the child uh, wasn't there. <clears throat> and somehow they had to, uh, they, they had to do something uh, to make sure that a kid couldn't get in. And that's where this separator came for the, uh, uh, for the prevention of anybody being able to get in here. Um, that was an expensive uh, mistake. Um, for somebody not to make that happen. So um, to the uh, folks who uh, basically give us information that we can't figure out, thank you so much. But this, um, this is a lot more parts than, uh, than, than what we should have seen. We, we should try our best to try and com combine as many parts as we possibly can. At Monroe, we, uh, we uh, actually, <laughs> It was at Ford Motor Company that I actually invented most of the stuff that we do or used it. And, um, and uh, if a part doesn't have to be a fundamentally different material or it doesn't have to move during the operation of the product's uh, existence, then it's supposed to be an elimination or combination of that part into other parts. When we look at this, we're looking at lots of parts and these guys uh, don't have too many. So let's have a look at what we see in here with all of this and look at what, uh, what, uh, what Tesla had. So in essence, this is the octo valve. This is what we call a super manifold. And these are two heat exchangers. 
These all are in one relatively small package with only a few hoses that go from place to place. That means a lot less leak paths. These leak paths are something that are the bane of, uh, of construction, especially if you're looking at trying to push a car out every 60 seconds or so. That's what these guys are hopefully going to be doing uh, because we want to make sure that, or they want to make sure that the customers are happy and there's no leaks all over their floors. I think that this could be packaged inside this vehicle, something similar to this. It might look a little bit different, but certainly it won't look as complicated as that and it'll never have as many quality problems as far as leak paths and are concerned. So I really would like to say to Ford, if, uh, <laughs> if you could, it might be a good idea to really rethink this. This will cut the cost, it'll cut the weight because all those hoses are filled with fluid. And fluid is a lot heavier than a couple of pieces of plastic and a die casting. So at the end of the day, um, I'm not as pleased as what I was hoping to be when we pulled the, uh, pulled the frunk out. But I can tell you for sure that this is better than the ID4. And although we didn't take too much uh, time to pull out the, um, the uh, um, frunk and whatnot from the, uh, um, from the Polestar 2, I'm pretty sure that the Ford will easily compete with that one as well. It's just that these are, these are things that, that, that should be addressed and soon. Now, I will tell you that Tesla changed from what they had with the, uh, with the um, super bottle to this process and they did it in less than a year. Um, that's a challenge that Ford Motor Company should be taking on right now and hopefully <clears throat> Hopefully they'll be able to make it as a running change in both the uh, in both the uh, uh, the Mustang here and uh, the Lightning, the F-150 Lightning. So anyway, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Um, we'll talk to you again. We've got lots more uh, going on, and um, and uh, like I say, if if you uh, if you're of a mind, I've just been reminded. <laughs> Uh, please uh, hit the subscription button. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great day.